Hello, everybody. I uh, hope you have a great week. Let me tell you a story. This is a story about King David. King David, if you don't know, is uh, one of the most important kings uh, in the Old Testament. He's talked about a lot. He uh, is promised by God that he's going to be on the throne for a long time and that his descendants will sit on the throne. Jesus is in uh, David's uh, family line and family tree. Um, he's an important figure in biblical history. But what you might not know about him is the, is the time when he wasn't king. You see, there was a king before him named Saul. That king was uh, appointed by God just the same. And, and uh, after some, some times of unfaithfulness, some bad choices, uh, his anointing was taken away from him. He was told that he wasn't going to be king anymore. Um, and uh, God's prophet Samuel made David king and, and uh, planned on making him king uh, at some point. Saul, very... Uh, self-conscious about this, very paranoid about his power being taken away, starts to lash out against David. David had gotten into, uh, into kind of the royal circle. He knew how to play the harp. He killed Goliath. Uh, if you know that story, that's a story for another day. Uh, but he had gotten into Saul's house. He was best friends with Saul's son, and he was in Saul's uh, home playing the harp for him. And Saul threw a spear at him. <laughs> That's how paranoid Saul was. Um, so David ran away. Uh, Saul wanted to seek after David, wanted to kill David because David was a threat to his kingdom, a threat to his power. And so uh, Jonathan, Saul's son, David's best friend, helped David get away. He went with uh, his friends and his uh, his little band of, of soldiers and went off and ran into exile. Um, and Saul eventually caught up with him. He got hint that uh, David was off somewhere. So he uh, chased after him and he uh, went into this cave in this cavern where, where David was supposedly hiding. Now David saw Saul before Saul saw him. And all of David's men said, now's the chance. Uh, this is the paranoid king that's trying to kill you. He threw a spear at you. This is the chance to get back at him. This is the chance to end all of this conflict. And David uh, goes up to Saul and he doesn't kill him. He cuts off part of Saul's cloak. Feeling bad and ashamed about this action, uh, he, he says to Saul, look, I had a chance to kill you. Here's your part of your cloak that I cut off. And Saul leaves. Now Saul doesn't give up um, being paranoid. Saul and David would continue to be at odds with each other until Saul died. But I think that this story reminds us that lashing out in violence and retribution, harshness, and hatred against one another is not the answer. Now, David is by no means perfect. If you know the rest of David's story, David's an adulterer. He gets mad. He uh, takes power for himself. He doesn't always make good choices. But that's a good story of, of a time when he made a good choice. Uh, he had a lot of people around him telling him that the right answer was to lash out. The right answer in the face of, of paranoia, in the face of um, hatred, in the face of people doing the wrong thing is to do the wrong thing back. To lash out in violence back. To throw the spear back at Saul. But he didn't do it. In fact, the little extent to the the little extent that he went to lash out against Saul to prove that he could have killed him, he felt bad about that. He felt ashamed about that. And I wonder, do we have the same sense of shame when we lash out at one another on Facebook, um, in person, behind one another's back? 
are, are we just as pressured by one another that the right answer in the face of fire is to fire back? Are we listening to the voice of Jesus, the ways of God who makes peace and points us to righteousness, the words of Jesus that tell us to love our enemies, to pray for those who curse us? Are we listening to God's voice? Or are we listening to the pressure around us that says the right answer is to lash back? My hope for you and for me in this time when there's a lot, a lot of paranoia, there's a lot of false information, there's a lot of people at each other's throats. And frankly, the church is in a place where it, it uh, feels like it's losing influence in the culture and it feels like it's uh, um, losing power and it's paranoid. Don't be paranoid. Christ is still on the throne. And Christ loved his enemies so much that he made them, he made them his friends. That's why you are here. That's why I am, am talking into this camera today, because Jesus loved me, though I was his enemy. He didn't even go so far as to prove he could have done otherwise. He laid his life down. He did what David didn't even do. He laid his life down for those that put him on the cross for the people who are complicit in, in sin and, and brokenness in the world for you. And for me, Jesus died and Jesus rose again and Jesus reigns. So don't be paranoid like Saul throwing spears at every little thing that threatens your power and your influence and your sense of um, self or a sense of selfish power. Um, and don't uh, be like David's comrades and pressure one another and say, listen, they said that that's their problem. Let's fight back. They did wrong, so let's do wrong back. That's eye for eye, tooth for tooth. But Jesus has brought us to a place where loving enemies is the way Loving enemies is the truth and loving enemies is the life to the point where enemies can become friends. And I know that's hard to feel like that right now. But maybe in this week, maybe on this day, we'll listen to the voice that tells us that forgiveness and love are truer and lovelier still than violence and retribution, than harsh words and hatred. I hope that you have a blessed week. I'm praying for you. We love you. Stay safe. Go and sin no more. God bless you. Bye-bye.